what's going on guys and welcome to your 27th HTML and CSS tutorial and in this tutorial let's continue with what we learned in the last tutorial about table and one of its attribute so in the last tutorial I showed you how to create a simple table with just two columns and one row with the help of a deprecated attribute of table tag called border now let's see how we can make this document a HTML5 value document. So to do that, first of all, we'll need to remove this border attribute from this table tag. Let's reload this and now we get a plain text but we want to give it a feel of a table. So what we'll do is, inside the style tag, we'll grab the table and we'll give it a border of, let's say, 3 pixel solid black so that's how you give a border in the table but we have got a problem here now if I reload this now this would give it a border just like we are giving to some div or so so it doesn't look like our original border attribute which we specified in the table tag so to do that we have to do this border to multiple selectors and to select more than one element we put a comma and we write the selector name so for example instead of writing like table border 3 pixel then tr border 3 pixel and then td what we do is if the properties and the values are common we just put a comma we write the element name we just put a comma we write another element name and so on so you could actually use make use of ids or classes anything you like so I'm just grabbing table TR and TD all at once because I would like to give all of those a border of 3 pixel solid black so now let's reload this and now this kind of looks uh, similar to what we have very first while uh, starting this tutorial and let's uh, make it a little uh, lighter and gray and we have a nice table so let's add something to this let's say I create another row so I hope you are clear with the concepts of row and columns in tables so if not then let me tell you that rows are the horizontal uh, horizontal way of displaying data and columns are the vertical way of displaying data so this data one and this data one belongs to same column and these two belongs to same column these two data 1 and 2 belong to same row and these two belong to same row now we have another tag in your table which is th now td and th are exactly one and the same thing the difference is td uh, th is the bolded version of td attribute uh, td tag so this tag is uh, this line is equal to th and th so if I reload the document now and see then okay so I guess we didn't select it th here so it showed us no border let's reload this so now you see that b tag just makes the text bolder and same with the th tag so th stands for table heading just remember their full forms table heading your td stands for table data your tr stands for table row and table itself is a table tag nothing to explain here so now we have a data set of two rows and two columns and one thing special about table is if you don't specify any width to the table then it would automatically adjust the data according to its width so for example if you see that right now it's data 1 the, uh, filling the complete width of the cell now each uh, data block in the table is called as a cell remember that I would use this term so you should not be confused in the future tutorials so data 2 refers to a cell data 1 refers to a cell and similar like these two so table by default would is kind of reluctant to give more space and 
let's say I want to make it a little bit spacer and kind of giving it more space for displaying this data too so the traditional way would be to give cell padding now this attribute is deprecated but I'm just showing you this to just make you uh, recognize when you see the cell padding on a HTML5 document so you just don't say hey what the heck is that I never learned what is cell padding though it's not required in HTML but HTML5 sorry but uh, cell padding is, is still used by many old uh, old school developers so just uh, you need to correct them just remember that cell padding and cell spacing are deprecated attributes for table in HTML5 but for now let's just see what happens when I give it cell padding 20 and it doesn't require a unit right here uh, because it's kind of uh, fallbacks to a default unit I don't know maybe it's pixel or points but it's something we don't need so now when I reload this with the cell padding 20 you see that we get the padding of 20 units from the data uh, and the data is placed in the center because from the top also it's 20 units bottom left and right and cell spacing and I'm repeatedly telling you that do not use these two attributes but instead use the CSS which I would be showing you right now to perform such tasks but I'm uh, just telling you about these attributes because they are they were the part of HTML standard once so let's give cell, uh, cell spacing as well 20 and let's reload this so now you are understanding the difference between cell spacing and cell, spa uh, cell padding so cell spacing provides spaces between the cell cell boundaries and the table boundary but cell padding would provide spacing between the cell contents and its boundaries so now since these both are deprecated let's remove these and let's find a CSS way of doing this to make the document uh, HTML5 standard so one thing I want to tell you is that whatever you apply here to the table let's say if I apply border to then this would be inherited all the way down to all these tags but with CSS if I do just table border to then you saw that the border was only applied to this table only and not the child elements so that's uh, that's why we need to do multiple selectors in CSS similar way to apply cell spacing let's say let's give it a TR or maybe TR TD a cell spacing now right here if you know that I'm selecting every TD which is inside the TR but though it's not required to write TR this would work fine as well but I'm just writing for so that you can see that TDs are present in the TR which is the table row so now we make use of the property called padding to create a similar effect like a cell padding now cell padding I'm uh, uh, using this term cell padding because cell padding would add some spacing between the cell contents and the boundaries of that cell so let's say if I give it a padding of 10 pixels and with CSS you have to give the unit of the numeric value you are using because we have many units in CSS so now let's reload this document and now you can see that we have the padding of 10 pixels in each of the cell we have right here and to create a similar effect like of cell spacing we make use of margin now these margin and padding I guess are two of the most used properties in CSS while you are working with any of the element uh, let it be your div elements your span your block level elements h1 tags headings everything you need margin and padding in most of the cases when you are aligning a element in its proper position so let's say I give it a margin of 10 pixels as well and remember that padding and margin are two properties of CSS and not the attributes the attributes for table are cell spacing and cell padding and remember that 
cell spacing and cell spa uh, cell uh, spanning oh cell spacing and cell padding it should be yeah so that uh, my tongue just what you say so let me gather my thoughts uh, and yeah here we go so let's start it again now cell spacing and cell padding are only the attributes only the deprecated attributes of table and the tags under table and you cannot actually use cell spacing with body so though they are deprecated I am repeatedly telling you that but you should know that because that were a part of your uh, previous standards of HTML so now let's reload this document and let me save that okay so okay so let's see what's happening we have getting padding 10 pixel and uh, one thing I guess I remember now is that you can use margin with every element in HTML but not on table elements and specifically on those elements which have the display property set to table cell or table or anything else related to table and don't worry about this display property I would be explaining this display and everything like block level and inline elements in my next tutorial so not in the next I guess but in some future tutorial so that we don't break with this table flow so to achieve that spacing we had with the cell spacing attribute of table first of all what we need to do is we need to apply the attribute uh, the attribute border spacing border dash spacing to the table tag itself so if I give a 10 pixel right here and I reload this then now you can see that the margin between the borders of every cell and the table itself are is 10 pixel so remember that you can use margin property of CSS technically with every element except for those having a display table or any table display set to them and I will explain this display what this heck this display is in my future tutorial so don't worry about that leave it to me and uh, that's how basically table works and in the next tutorial we'll be finally making a good sort of table for us to work with and I'll see you then next time don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching the video